You're awake. I had Marge and Dan Hung stay by the Express to keep an eye on things. It's almost time. She should be arriving any moment now. Well, I've only been gone, what, a few months? And the space station is already in this state? Welcome back, Herda. This is the true master of the space station. Genius Society number 83, Herda. At least give me a proper introduction. Genius Society number 83? Of all my outstanding achievements, that's what you want to mention? That old Xandar came up with the name. You think I'd like it? So, this little twerp has the Stellaron now? Huh. Hmm. I'll have to take a good look. Hmm. Truly amazing! I built a whole space station just to contain this unactivated Stellaron and keep the blue from disaster. Yet someone was able to achieve that with this little twerp's body? How did they do it? Moreover, the Stellaron is still very stable in his body. <gasps> You're right! This little one's body truly is strange. I got it, but I'm still gonna call you Little Twerp. The space in my brain is too valuable to store people's names. Oh. Well, thanks for remembering my name then. That's different. We have business with each other. Um, what was your name again? Uh, uh, forget it. But let's focus on the one who can store a Stellaron in their body. Can I bring him in for some research? That's not up to me to decide. You can ask him yourself. Study you, of course. Your body contains a Stellaron, which in some sense is no different than storing a bomb. Who knows what might happen? Maybe it'll blow you to bits someday. You should be grateful that this genius is willing to help you out. I still have some interest now, but once that's gone, I'm not studying you even if you beg me. I'm very interested now. So there's almost nothing I won't accommodate. A Stellaron in your body? How interesting is that? Be grateful that I'm offering to help you out. This is a service even the IPC can't buy. You understand now? Herda wants you to stay in her space station. Well, I'm going to have to modify your wording here. This little twerp can only stay temporarily until the research is done. Or maybe I'll lose interest halfway through and they can just beat it. And after that? <laughs> Not my problem. <sighs> you also have another option. The Astral Express. If you want, you can leave with us. The Express has its fair share of experiences with Stellarons. The thing you're worried about and the answers we're looking for are one and the same. Besides, we can come back any time to let her to conduct her research. She's absolutely fascinated now. Hmm. Well, works for me. Keeps this subject fresh, too. And that way, I won't need to keep worrying about this little twerp all the time. <laughs> Perfect. Now oh, you should meet the others of the Genius Society. Some of them will trick you into thanking them after they milk you dry. At least I have my honesty going for me. Mm -hmm. Just remember to come back often. Make an appointment in advance with Asta or Arlen so I can make time to study you. There's no need to rush into this, Herda. 
Asta's in the master control zone. Let's let him have a talk with Asta first and decide for himself. I'll be waiting for you on the platform. It's no hurry if you still have things to do or someone to see. Come find me when you've made your decision.
I've been busy. What you're seeing is one of my remote control puppets. They're all over the station. I just connect to one wherever I am needed. Enough chit-chat. I am working on a big project with a few colleagues. If we succeed, it will answer the ultimate question that's been puzzling us for thousands of amber eras. The truth about eons. Eons. Think about it. What mystical existences. Some eons used to be ordinary humans like you and me. But somehow they managed to obtain power beyond our imagination. They are mysterious, powerful, silent, and terrifying. It's hard to explain all the mysteries surrounding them. How were they created? Why were they created? What were they created for? Have you ever thought about these questions? Great! Curiosity is the foundation of science. Now we can't just think about it, we should also act. I want to give you the chance to participate in this project. Let's work together. The four geniuses of the society wrote a program together. You see the big machine in the office? That machine contains a universe. Just like the universe we live in, but it's more streamlined and customized. I call it the metaverse. That's what my partner said as well. Fine, I am a team player. Then let's call it the simulated universe. Now go and experience it for yourself. I will guide you in the simulated universe to make sure nothing happens to you. I'll even give you a substantial reward. to repent.
Clemency? Never heard of it. This sanctuary is but a vision! Stay right there while I give you a present! Check out this awesome move! to repent.
Move carefully. This sanctuary is but a vision.
It's getting late. Where to now? So, have you thought things through? Then come with me. Founded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express, and everyone.
everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. Here already? Hmm, I was just engaging in pleasantries. How can I help? You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Don Hong's room? Oh, you mean the archives? Ah, uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. Oh? Why are you interested in her room? Ah, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. She's always running around, so she might not be there. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. We usually meet up here, but our personal cabins are in the next carriage. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the express for a long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Oh, it's you. How do you feel? I'll check you out in a minute. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. 
<laughs> All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. But I won't bore you any longer. So much happened at the space station, you must be tired. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. <laughs> Who's that? I learned to sense incoming visitors after people kept barging in so frequently. you? Feel free. This is open to everyone on the express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the express. I enter the collected data into the archive's data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the express encounters and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go. Lieutenant of the Lawfu Cloud Knights reporting in. If you have some free time, would you mind sparring with me? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't go easy on you. What kind of sword training will you do today? Do you wish for me to accompany you? The sword needs to return to its scabbard. See you tomorrow, teacher.
The door is unlocked. Should I go in? Uh, better to wait till the room's owner comes back. Ahem! Hi! Hello! Attention all passengers! Attention all passengers! The Express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. I repeat, the Express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. <sighs> you took long enough, but at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. like March, always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. your first trip, so that should be double the excitement, right? Ah, uh, you're just like Mr. Yang, always worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. Young people should be energetic. Here, let's do some relaxation exercises. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. You really got it, huh? The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might. Really? I've never been able to do it successfully myself. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? The 
universe. The Astral Express. Eons. Did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? The stellar on thing in my body. Are you trying to get the stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But it wasn't stars for me, though. It was lights. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you! Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space! Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. I don't remember a thing. Who I am, where I'm from, my name... It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh... <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about... ten minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy! Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself. And falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you! Hello? Hello, hello? <clears throat> All passengers, please return to your seats. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. Five, four, three, two, one. Those millennia. Is this what Eurelo 6 has become? Uh huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Ah, oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stop over time, extended indefinitely. Indefinitely. Until the anomaly is removed. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. 
The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a Stellaron, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Don't worry, it's not the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Urielo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. trust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for Eurelo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. I enjoy being alone, especially when I have important work to do. I went through the Express's database and it seems the environment on Eurelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. Uh, by normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. 
If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. <sighs> if I know Himiko, she's not going to let you stay behind. You're new. I'm sure she wants to get you started with some first-hand trailblazing. Don't worry. With March around, you are guaranteed an eventful expedition. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Eurelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at a new world. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. And I'm sure you'll get along really well with March and Dan Hung. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? <sighs> That's our Don Hung. Always trying to look cool with his poker face. Don't mind him. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought, a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice, a very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. All right, here comes the Eurelo 6 Trailblaze team. Eurelo 6, we're here. <sighs> it really is one big snowball. Hey, get your own metaphor. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates. The target should be up ahead. And then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Me neither. If only we had a snowmobile! 
we never get to bring anything cool from the Express? Do you remember what you did to our last snowmobile? <laughs> anyway, moving on! Remember, we should stay vigilant. We know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phase ice powers. And Don Hung... Uh... He's got that mysterious past thing going for him. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're gonna regret it. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's go. Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing. This place still hasn't been corroded, yet Fragmentum monsters have already made it here. I fear the Stellaron may be exerting a significant influence on this world.
scared to death. <laughs> Holding your breath won't help. I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand. Or the snow in this case. They just need a helping hand. Ouch! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? Is crawling around in the snow a crime these days? I mean, come on, surely. It doesn't warrant a spearing. But then again, how can I blame you? I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides, I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jepard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? Wait, you're not Silvermain Guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. Excellent. I'll remember the name. I never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but... Fear not. Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together. <laughs> Say, why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel the main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity. Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than ten feet from a Silvermane guard. Settlement? What a literary turn of phrase. Why, there's only one place in this world where the living still reside. Our beloved Bellabog. The further away you get, the dicier things become. The city of preservation. The towering citadel. Humanity's last bastion against the eternal freeze. It may sound a bit over the top, but those names are grounded in truth. The only place humans can eke out an existence is behind those impregnable walls. Me? You guys scared me to death. There I was, looking for relics to sell, when all of a sudden you came stomping over. I thought the Silvermane guards were paying me a visit. Seriously, though? Try treading a little lighter next time, huh? If you run into the guards, they won't hide in a snowdrift, and you'll be in a cell before you know it. You really don't know? The Silvermane Guards are Bellabog's soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work. Seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but... It would cost. But, but it would 
be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Kosky's middle name. Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So why were you hiding from the Silvermane guards? Yeah, I was just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, there'd be no need for secrecy. So where about you guys from, anyway? I don't mean to pry or anything. I just care about my friends. No pressure. Rule number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are they? Uh, you remember the Silvermane guards I mentioned? That's them. Help me, old friends. I don't want to be caught. It's the suspect and his accomplices. Arrest them. It's now or never. So, how many of my moves? Over do you to you, block? dear friends. Hey, where do you think you're? Who's the lucky one today? What are you looking at? Huh? <laughs> time for a shot. Nap time. Time to twirl. A one-time enemy. A guest with no manners, huh? <laughs> A gift from the stars. Naughty children, don't let savor the vigor of them. Oh. Time for some sword play. <laughs> How many of my moves can you block? Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, profound secrets of the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! Strike with heart! Time to twirl! Hm, scared yet? Who's the lucky one today? All better now? Saving me won't earn you any favors. Blade in flight! <laughs> Practice is over! Swords descend! for a shot. Just a little something. <laughs> Think nothing of it. I can breathe easy again. You're in bad shape. Time for some sword play. I'm okay. <laughs> Naughty children, savor the vigor of life. Japard Landau, captain of the Silvermane Guards, order you to relinquish your futile resistance. 
Oh, that Sampo the cheated us all. Adversary. Wait till Help I get my hands on him. Flight! Relinquish your Remember resistance. Remember inviting you. Uh, so I'm a criminal, huh? Oh, forget Sampo. Wait until I get my hands on you. <laughs> a gift from the stars. <laughs> Time for a shot. <laughs> Stay focused! <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. <laughs> Think nothing of it. Saving me won't earn you any favors. Take courage! <laughs> so, how many of my moves can you block? <laughs> a guest with no manners, huh? <laughs> Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, profound secrets of the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! Naughty children, don't listen. Now time. Resistance is futile! Time for some sword play! <laughs> This is over. Swords descend. <laughs> Strike with heart. Our position is solid. I don't remember inviting you. Who's the lucky one today? On my command! Time for some sword play! Blade in flight! Number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow. It's now or never. Over to you, dear friend. Hey, where do you think you're? <laughs> Time for the main event. Turn up the volume. With me out here, how can we lose? Let's make it quick. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision. Let's go. Better up! Time for the main event. Let's rock! You have the worst luck running into me! <laughs> it's too late to repent. Time for the make. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> Let's make it quick. <laughs> uh. 
I, Japard Landau, captain of the Silver Main Guards, order you to relinquish your Ready futile resistance. Relinquish your resistance! Uh, so I'm a criminal, huh? Uh, forget Sampo! Wait until I get my hands on you! Keep up! My tempo! You have the worst luck running into me! Stay right there while I give you a present! Gotta try hard sometimes! Check out this awesome move! Let's go. Uh, rules are made to be broken! Sights and strike! This is our chance. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant, this sanctuary is but a vision! Pretty good crowd today. Let's rock! My turn! Let's make it quick. Clemency? Never heard of it. This song's just for you. <laughs> this ends here! And the prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. Yeah, we'd never team up with someone like him. I'm not trying to talk our way out of this, but we're not friends with that scoundrel. Did you see how fast he ditched us? We rescued him from the snow out of the kindness of our hearts. We had no idea he might be using us to get past you. Are you really dumb enough to fall for his... I'm a captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the architects, not now. Take them away. Photos. Ah, oh, you're a genius. Great idea. You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one. Behold, Yarilo 6. <laughs> you mean to say that this white ball that's here, <laughs> that's our home? How can that... Hmm. It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible. And Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her. Nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard.
Welcome to Bellabog, the city of preservation. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. He sure saying some weird stuff. A marked change in tone. Sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So, why is he telling us all this? You wanted to know. Uh, 